Next up, I'd like to invite Barclays to come and talk a little bit about their solution and how do they take that into maybe a little bit different direction. Thank you. Um, I'm Yassi, Chief Data Officer for Barclays Africa Group. I'm George, heading the real-time analytics product. So let me give you a glimpse of our world in Africa. It's Monday morning, 8 a.m., Johannesburg. Commercial Business District, 180 Main Street, branch. Lines of people lined up to walk in because they want to talk to a teller or they want to talk to a banker about check balances, transfers, deposits, product information. The list goes on and on and on and on. That's just one branch. We have 1,300 branches across our African continent. We have call centers where reality is similar, if not worse. And we have engagement channels, such as ATMs, online, mobile. You're a 327-year-old organization. You're older than the Declaration of Independence of the United States. So our business was built on deep relationships, on trust, on one-to-one -one conversations. 50 years ago, if you walked into a branch and you talked to somebody, they knew exactly about who you are, who are your kids. If you wanted a new mortgage, they knew exactly what your financial situation is. The so risk assessment was very, very easy. As we scaled and went from thousands of customers to millions of customers, that was just not sustainable. Today's reality is the millennia are coming. It's a huge population that is coming in. They're on smartphones. They want the right product at the right time in the right channel every time, all the time. So by 2020, the growth of smartphones will be 500 million across the African continent. And today, 50% of our smartphone users are below the age of 25. So you can imagine the opportunity there. So what are we doing about this? We're essentially marrying our back office, our data science department, with data product managers that we refer to as data wonderkins because they have design thinking, customer experience thinking with the front end, our product teams and sales teams, to actually go detect or find customer use cases to bring those back and design optimized end-to-end -end journeys and solve for the power of big data using cutting edge latest open source technologies and delivering value for our customers. And we use these as models, we open source them internally, that they can be reused over and over again across different sides of the business. Today, we're gonna to talk about three creative solutions that we've done in the retail bank, in our card business, in our digital bank. So. Okay, so I'll start with the first use case that brings to life what um, Yas has been talking about. So imagine you wake up and you realize you have incurred an unexpected charge because of running into overdraft. And that can be up to 300 rand, so quite a substantial amount just for a very small overdraft. And in reality, you, you may have a lot of cash in your savings accounts. So that's a really big pain, pain point, and everyone is really annoyed about that. So that is what we set out to address with our predictive overdraft alerts. So in reality, what we did is that we used forecasting techniques on top of our transactional data in order to be able to notify the customers ahead of running into overdraft, so three days before, and on top of that, most importantly, giving them specific personalized actions on the back of it. So this can be transferring funds from your savings accounts to your current account instantaneously, or it can be also pre-authorized uh, overdraft products that we can offer to the customers. What we saw on the back of it was really amazing numbers. So about two out of three of our customers decided to take action on the back of receiving our communications. And the feedback we received was extremely positive. So higher, uh, an NPS, transactional NPS of higher than 80. And we have been featured on Finextra. So if you want, you can go and Google us and find out more. So I'm going now to touch on the second use case. And this is more credit, limit, credit uh, related. So think what, recall what was the last time you received a call from an unknown number and there was an agent trying to convince you to just get a credit limit increase. So pushing you to get it, although it's not probably the right product for you, although you might not be using more than 20% of your overall limit. So this is an experience that is not great for anyone and that's the reason why we introduced the credit limit increase optimization. So for this purpose, we used cross-organizational uh, data, so including retail data and car data, in order to start predicting who are the customers that are more likely to uptake our product. And essentially, we shifted the focus more from a product eligibility to the customer suitability. 
So what is the right product for the customer at the right time through engaging models like interactive voicemail and interactive SMS? What we saw on the back of it, we saw an uptake that it was double to what BAU used to be. And at the same time, the value, the revenue increased because an average uh, credit limit increase would be higher by 10% than the norm. And that is really important to think as we're moving also to our third use case, which touches upon what Yassi was talking about. So this is about a big challenge and a big opportunity, and it's the digital space. So obviously we want to convert as many customers as possible to the right channels, but then can you go to an African farmer who is in a remote rural area and just push him to use mobile banking? I mean, if there is no 3G coverage, is that the right thing to do? So it's more about suggesting the right channels and converting the right customers at the right time. And what we did there is that we used a hybrid approach. So we combined clustering with the regression analysis as a pre-processing stage before our predictive modeling. And we identified the set of characteristics that define the propensity for users to use different types of digital uh, products, such as our mobile banking app and online channels. What we saw on the back of it was that we had 10 times higher adoption for specific clusters for mobile banking, and one out of two of non-users, non-digital users in the past were more likely to do transactions digitally post our campaigns. So the very interesting thing, and I'm closing with this for this campaign, was the fact that we used open source scalable techniques and technologies like Scala and Spark, and this is just the basis. It's a reusable framework that can be used for other purposes in terms of propensity modeling. So what's next for us then? Um, as I mentioned, we open source our models, treat them as products so they can be reused across the organization. So our UK business in London is knocking on our door and wants to reuse the overdraft product in their retail side. And for us being an emerging market in the bigger sort of mothership of Barclays PLC, this is really, really, you know, admirable. We feel proud of ourselves. And across the African continent, we're going systematically to help our colleagues reuse the same model for wider use cases. So in the wealth investment management, for example, in collections, we're going after new countries such as Botswana and Kenya. And essentially, the goal is to, again, continue with this mirroring of our data science department, data wonder cans, and frontline business to do magic in the present and in the future. Thank you. So questions from our uh, jury to start with. You, yes, there's a, there's a microphone right there. Go ahead. Can you? <laughs> Is it on? Is it on? There you go. Um, were you able to quantify the, the value um, in terms of all of those use cases that it brought to the business? Very simple question. So we go use case by use case, and some of them, if you think about return on investment, what was the project cost and to launch this? It may be direct revenue generation or cost efficiency if you go in the area of collections and you reduce collection calls, what we are focusing on right now. If it's revenue or cost reductions, it's going to be a line item in our P&L and that relevant part of the business. If it's customer satisfaction, NPS going up, it's the right thing to do, treating customers fairly, but you will not see it in our annual report. But we go use case by use case. At the end of the year, when we go pitch for this year, is our, we call it our Series A year. Next year, we're going to go pitch to CEOs for Series B. Um, we're going to see on a consolidated basis how much return that we um, generate on the, um, on the back of our investment. And some of the investment going back infrastructure, so going, you know, building our Hadoop technology estate, et cetera, that's infrastructure. So hopefully by capitalizing that and going and showing the return over a course of three years, we can show that you know, it was worth it. So that's the goal. What else? Other questions? Here's a question. How has the velocity of the data that you're dealing with in terms of your predictive model changed or shaped your approach? As it, you talked about scale, how has that really uh, affected that? Yeah, this is, this is a really good question. So as, as we mentioned, we're using cross-organizational data. So we're touching on different sources. And in banking, it can be quite sensitive because this is actually about people's money. So there are different source systems coming from a different perspective, refreshing a different uh, frequencies. So we used uh, transactional data when it came to income, expenses, payments, and we used also behavioral and more like personal information data in order to shape our approach. So this had different frequencies. The thing is that when we are utilizing our Hadoop, we could dump this data in. We utilize specific flexible technologies, as I mentioned earlier. So the velocity was, uh, and the volume, I would say, were a couple of parameters that shaped our approach, and that's the reason why we are using all of these scalable technologies rather than more uh, traditional ways like SaaS or right. something more old school. 
Good. Thank you. Let's give them a round of applause.